Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks. Please stay tuned for today's program, but first, some tasty tidbits from your host. In 1936, he won a screen test with Warner Brothers, but the studio rejected him, saying he looked too much like one of their other young actors, Errol Flynn. Described as one of the most perfectly photogenic faces of the silver screen, it didn't take long for this blonde, blue-eyed actor to land a contract in Hollywood. I'm talking about Richard Denning. He made his big screen debut in 1937's Hold'em Navy and went on to work in about 50 films prior to World War II. Not all were credited roles, and many may not be all that memorable, except maybe this one from 1942, starring the lovely Dorothy L'Amour. After the war, he returned to Hollywood to work mainly in B-thrillers and low-budget horrors, such as Lady at Midnight and Unknown World from 1948. That same year, Denning caught a break. Cast with Lucille Ball on CBS Radio's My Favorite Husband. The show was such a hit that in 1951, CBS offered Lucy a TV deal, but she insisted on casting her real-life husband, Desi Arnaz. As a consolation prize, he landed the lead in Mr. and Mrs. North with the beautiful Barbara Britton. During the 50s, Denham was busy on the big screen with such films as The Crooked Web, The 49th Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and Girls in Prison. Which brings us to today's feature presentation. I'll Pick More Daisies, starring Richard Denning in an episode of the anthology series TV Reader's Digest, originally broadcast Valentine's Day, 1955. A man turning 50 filled with regrets over the many missed opportunities in his life, gets a chance to relive those moments with decidedly different outcomes. Well, happy birthday, Pop. Oh, thanks, Junior. <clears throat> happy birthday, who's? Well, yours, Pop. Today you're a man. Today you're 50 years old. I never thought it would happen. Well, it couldn't happen to a nicer old guy. Happy birthday. <laughs> What's happy about it? This one I need like a hole in the head. Where do 50 years go? Why, only yesterday I was 40. We were fighting Hitler. And a couple of days before that, I was 30. We were fighting hunger. Don, breakfast ready. Coming, Martha. Fifty years of breakfast. Eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty breakfasts. I just knew you won't like it, Daddy. Of course he'll like it. Jill made it herself, dear. Oh, this is fine, honey. It's it's my favorite color. <laughs> Come on, Repulsive. We'll be late to school. Happy birthday again, Daddy. Bye. Uh -huh. Bye, Dolly. <laughs> your face is as long as your birthday sweater. Is 50 really that bad? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing really. Oh, I know you, Don. When you say it's nothing, it's usually real serious. Well, I think it's, it's everything. Mm-hmm. I knew it. I'm 50 years old, and I haven't accomplished anything. What? Not really. Oh, it's not that I haven't had opportunities. I've had them, plenty of them, but I've let them pass me by. Oh, I won't have you say that. You're a very successful CPA, and you've got two fine, healthy children. And you've got me, Don. I'm sorry I started it. No, no, I... I really want to know, what else does a man want? Adventure. Adventure? Like Clark Gable in the movies? You know something? If I had to live my life over again, I'd... I'd 
pick more daisies. Daisies? You want to pick daisies at your age? No, that's not what I mean. I... Well, there's the age 17. Five fifteen, another day. My birthday, but just like every other day. Yeah, I've been doing it for 30 years. 15 years more, and I'll be eligible for social security. Fine way to wind up. What's wrong with me? Why, just once in my life didn't I let go? Just once. In a few years, I'll be an old man. <laughs> a very old man. Now, oh, don't kid yourself any longer. There's no chance for excitement tomorrow. Tomorrow's here. No more hovering on the brink of the unknown. You're sunk down. Sunk without a trace in your account books, your ledgers. No more chances. Ah, uh, what do you mean, no more chances? Who are you? I'm you. Oh. oh, of course. Look, if you insist on talking to me, I must ask you to keep your voice down. Yeah, you see, still playing it cautious. Oh, well, you're right. You're absolutely right. You've had plenty of chances. I know, but I didn't grab them. I wish I had. For instance, well, the time the boss bawled me out, I, I should have thrown the job right in his face. Those, those wild parties back in the 20s, I, I should have drunk more bathtub gin. When I was a kid, I should have played more hooky from school. Well, let's start with playing hooky. Want to give it a go? What do you mean? Are you crazy? But don't you want another chance? Of course, who wouldn't? All right, then. Sit back and relax. Dawn? Yes, Mother? Have you got your rubbers on? Yes, Mother. That's a good boy. It may rain before evening. Did you take your spring tonic? Yes, Mother. Are you wearing your sweater? Gosh, do I have to? Yes, you do. What do you think Mother made it for? Be sure to come straight home from school. I always do. That's Mother's good boy. Have you got your lunch? Yes, Mother. Whoa, there. This is your chance, boy. I thought you wanted to play hooky. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. But he told me he'd come straight home from school. But he didn't. Face it, Grace, kids don't always do what they say they're going to do. But Donald does. He always comes straight home from school. Grace, there's got to be a first time for everything. How can you stand there with a smirk on your face when your only son's been kidnapped? Kidnapped? Yes, what else? On the way to school, I phoned the principal. Donald never got there. The principal told me so. <gasps> Where did you find those? Shoved in under a bush. <gasps> there, you see? Oh, that's all I've got left of him. All I've got left. Now, Grace, this proves he wasn't kidnapped. <gasps> it does? How? Oh. Well, they're not going to undress a kid before they kidnap him. Oh, he's right, Mrs. Wilkerson. He's right as rain. Oh. Then where is he? Well, he probably played hooky from school and went fishing. Not Donald. Donald wouldn't do a naughty thing like that. Grace, Donald is ten years old. But he hasn't got a fishing rod. Little boys don't need fishing rods. Not as long as there's a bent pin, a piece of string, and saplings growing along the creek.
Good evening, Mr. Wilkerson. I'm afraid I have bad news for you. Oh, no. Oh, no, ma'am, it ain't that. The lad's right out here. Come on in, Donald. You're going to have to face it sooner or later. Donald! Where have you been? Thank heaven, you're... What happened to your foot? When I was running, I stepped on a board. It had a nail in it. A nail? Locked you off. Oh, darling, get off your foot. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I'll get the castor oil. Oh, no, Mother, not that. That doesn't sound like lockjaw to me. Go on, Donald, tell the folks why you were running. The game warden was chasing me. Bertie, turn down his bed. Call the doctor. Why was the game warden chasing you, darling? I... I don't know. Now, that ain't no way to talk, Donald. Of course you know. You was fishing in the state hatchery, right in broad daylight, when the warden saw you. I'd have got away from him and then been for that old truant officer. Truant officer? Oh, Donald, demerits. Why, you've never had a demerit in your life. <laughs> He's got worse than demerits now, ma'am. Mr. Wilkinson, I'm authorized by the state to collect a 25 buck fine for your son's shenanigans. $25? Yes, sir, you're right. If he was my boy, I'd let him have it. Oh, no, you don't. You said yourself, all your old boys play hooky and go fishing. Not in state hatcheries, they don't. Not unless they're as stupid as your son. Well, uh, I'll just collect the damages and mosey along. I'm sorry, sir. I'm just doing my duty. It's all right, officer. He'll pay for it. He won't get an allowance for 50 weeks. Oh, by the way, here's the boy's fishing rod. I'm afraid it won't be much use to him. He fell on it when he was running. That was my best fishing rod. And it will be of some use to me. Andy, Andy, please, I beg you. That uh, didn't turn out so good, did it? If I hadn't stepped on that nail. Oh, but you would have. Yeah, playing hooky from school, that's, that's kid stuff. Uh, there's still plenty of things I wish I'd done. For instance, well, I always wanted adventure. Like uh, Clark Gable? No, like me. Like you? Yes. Why did I have to become engaged so young? Well, you didn't. It was Martha. Yeah, I know. I wanted to go prospecting. Give up that dull job with Winston, Buxton, Blumark, and Funk. I might have become a millionaire. Want to give it a try? You bet. Martha, listen. I am listening. Well, I had a letter from Chad Winterbottom. Oh, I never could stand that dizzy drugstore cowboy. What's he got to say for himself? Oh, he's, he's settled down now. He, he's out in Oklahoma prospecting for oil. Well, what's this got to do with you? Well, he, he wants me to come out there, too. Oh, gosh, this, this is a big opportunity. In a couple of years, I'll, I'll be rich. A couple of years? Now, look, it, it won't be any longer for you than it will be for me. Oh, now, look. You have a very good job with Winston Buxton, Blue Mark, and Funk. And, and I shouldn't be telling you this, but Papa's heard that you're going to get a promotion and a raise. Well, I know, but... Wait, this is utter nonsense. What do you know about oil? What do you know about Oklahoma? Well, what does anybody know about anything until he's tried it? Darling? Oh, honey. I'd worry so. Oh, what's there to worry about? The idea of you out in the wilderness, all by yourself, looking for something you don't know how to find. Oh, gosh, everybody's got to learn. Oh, but two years, you, you might forget all about me. Oh, Martha, how could I? Well, stranger things have happened. Or... I might forget you. Oh, Martha, you wouldn't. Huh? Don't fall into that trap, Don. If you really want adventure, this is your chance. Martha, I'm going out west. If you love me, you'll wait for me. I'll strike it, Rich, and in two or three years, I'll come back and claim you, and we'll live happily ever after. If you leave me now, Don Wilkerson, then, then our engagement is off. So bad. <laughs> Martha. 
Professor. Don? Sandwich you got there. It's good too. Wanna buy? Just a teeny one. You keep it. What are you doing, darling? Nothing, Mama. I just gave the nice man my sandwich. He was hungry. Would you like something to eat? Could use a meal, ma'am. We'll just go around the back of the house. Go to the kitchen. Thank you. Mommy, I thought she told me it wasn't nice to sock. I'm sorry. I'm leading such a rough life. Looks like I've forgotten the table manners. Don't mind. You're a stranger to these parts, aren't you? Yes. Where are you from? I've uh, been out in Oklahoma, mostly. One place or another. <laughs> Prospecting for oil. Oklahoma? Yes, ma'am. You didn't by chance run into a fellow by the name of Don Wilkerson. No, ma'am, I didn't. Mama, look, he's sopping again. It's Daddy! Daddy! This, uh, Don Wilkerson, he, he was a friend of yours? Yes, but it was a long, long time ago. Excuse me, please. Don't get up. Finish your coffee. Say, what is this Annabelle tells me about some stranger in the kitchen? Shh, darling, he'll hear you. He's just some poor down and outer, and he, he looks so hungry. How do you know he's not an escaped criminal or something? I didn't think of it that way. Well, I'd better get rid of him. It's a good thing I came home. Why did you, Charlie? Is anything wrong? Mm, vice versa. I've been made a full partner in the firm. From now on, it's going to be Winston, Buxton, Bluemark, Funk, and Thompson. I hurried home to tell you. Oh, Charlie, how wonderful. Glad that didn't happen. Life without Martha. Can't imagine it. Don't expect a woman to wait around forever while you chase off after a dream, do you? Oh, no, but she didn't have to marry that, that Charlie Thompson. She always was a stuffed shirt, buttering up old man Funk. Well, convinced. Yeah, but I never had any fun. You know what I mean. No wild oats, not even one. The other fellas are always bragging about their conquests, and I, I've got nothing to say. I never did anything. Say, how about that girl, the, uh, the dancer? Remember you made out her income tax? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, she was quite a dish, wasn't she? Oh, uh, you can say that again. <laughs> it was after office hours. Uh, like all those show people with, with no sense of responsibility, she waited till the last minute to file a return. It had to be postmarked that night. After office hours, about 7 o'clock before it was finally ready for her signature. There we are. Now, if you'll just sign right here, Miss Latouche, our business will be completed. Now, if I just knew where to get the money to pay it, everything would be fine. <laughs> you'll find a way. Everybody does. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Sorry I had to keep you in after office hours. That's perfectly all right. It's too bad. Oh, I did the best I could with your deductions, Miss Latouche, but unfortunately... Oh, no, no, no. I mean, too bad the business is complete. I won't be seeing you now for another year. Oh, well, that's nice of you to say that. I, I'll miss you, too. Unless, of course, you take pity on me. I'm afraid I don't quite understand, Miss Latouche. Well, what's that understand about taking a lonely girl to dinner? Oh, now, a girl like you, then, there must be plenty of fellows that are ready to take you to dinner. <laughs> plenty, yes. But a girl only wants one. Oh, I understand, but uh, 
I'm afraid I'll have to get along home. You see, I've already missed the 515, and if I miss the 746, there's nothing that stops at my station until the 1102. Is that bad? Uh, well, you see, it's like this. My alarm is set for 615 a.m. 615 a.m. in the morning? That's right. It doesn't leave you much time for fun, does it? <clears throat> there we are. My fur. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Are you a man or are you a mouse, Donny boy? Wait, Miss Latouche, on second thought, if you would join me for dinner. Someone must have moved the lock. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> there we are. Well, good night, Marie. Gosh, I don't know when I've had such a wonderful time. You can be very gay when you forget your alarm clock. Yeah, <laughs> it goes off and... Two hours and 35 minutes. <laughs> Gonna be awfully surprised not to find me there. <laughs> Come in. Isn't it uh, too late? <laughs> too late for what? <laughs> what would you like to drink? Mm, maybe a little coffee. Coffee? Oh, well, milk will do if you don't have any coffee. <laughs> coffee doesn't always agree with me anyway. <laughs> oh, here. Fix yourself a nightcap. Oh, no, no. I, I don't think I ought to have any more to drink. I, I had more than my capacity tonight. <laughs> oh, I bet I feel awful tomorrow. <laughs> you worry too much about tomorrow. <laughs> Relax, darling. It's still today. Oh, say, you, you sure make a man forget his problems. What's going on around here? Who's he? My husband. Your husband? You heard her. Mr. Latouche? Don't get funny. If, if you told me you had a husband, I'd, I'd, I'd have recommended a, a joint return. Try my home, huh? Oh, no, sir. I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't dream of doing anything like that. I had no idea of breaking up anybody's home. Isn't this a little out of your depth, playboy, fooling around with other men's wives? Well, She's the only one, and I, I didn't know she was your wife. Why, you... No, no, wait, wait a minute. I, I can explain everything. Now, believe it or not, but I, I was making out your wife's income tax return. I ought to shoot you down in cold blood. Justifiable homicide. They wouldn't do a thing to me. Oh, don't kill him, Harry. I'm sure Don will do right by you. Oh, by all means. I, you have my sincerest apologies. Apologies? You think apologies can make up for my anguished feelings? Harry's feelings are awfully hurt, Don. How much worth do you think, Harry? Blackmail. Now you're calling me a blackmailer. Just for that, it's going to cost you more. Blackmailer! 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 Oh, that was terrible. What a predicament. <laughs> so you wanted to pick more daisies. <laughs> Century mark. Yeah, well, well, you ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> How about blowing out the candles, Danny? Yes, yeah, make All a wish. Right, make a big breath. Look out, you'll break a rib. <laughs> Take a deep breath, Pop, and let it out slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks.
folks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You know, uh, reaching 50 years of age is uh, quite an important moment in a man's life. I found that out today. It kind of makes you think. Makes you think of all the things you've done and all the things you didn't do. And you wish you hadn't done a lot of things you did and that you had done a lot of things you didn't. <laughs> Well, there are a lot of things I'd like to do over. There's no denying it. There are a lot of things I regret, even though they might have turned out worse. Hold it, boy, hold it. Have you any idea what you're saying? I thought we went all over that today. Oh, what am I talking about? I, I wouldn't do any of those things at all. If I had my life to live over again, I'd, I'd do it just exactly the same, exactly the same. I'm having a wonderful life, and I wouldn't want to change one single moment of it. That a boy, Don.